Croatian sharpshooter does it again. Rangers are the champions. This isn't the end, this is just the beginning. Can't be afraid. If this gets any worse, you know, I will harm the resignation. They've done it! Celtic are level! Hooper! Kovanek have scored, and me will have ended their treble hopes! It's Samaras with a header, and it is 1-0. And the title is well within their grasp. So the question was, would there be a title party at Kilmarnock for the second successive season? The answer, as if you didn't know it already, coming up as we review the SPL weekend in the company of Pat Nevin. We'd have liked to have a Celtic player, coach or the manager with us as well, just so, so as you know, we did ask. Here's how it all unfolded at Rugby Park yesterday. Kilmarnock attempted to spoil the party with this lineup. Defender Lewis Toshney, who's on loan from Celtic, couldn't play, and he was replaced by midfielder Liam Kelly. This was the team Celtic hoped would cross the finishing line. In came Adam Matthews, Kelvin Wilson, and Ki Sun Young. Anthony Stokes was on the bench. Highlights with Al Lamont. The Celtic supporters packing the rugby park stands to the rafters. As Key swings in the corner, Charlie McGrew rises and gives Celtic the perfect start to what they hope will be the perfect day. And Gary Harkins stood and watched as Charlie McGrew rose and Kenny Shields side behind early on. Back for Key. Scott Brown. Now Drew pops up on the right hand side. That's a good delivery. There's Glenn Lovins. Setting up a two goal lead. And the title party can surely begin already. Lovely ball from Mulgrew. Play provider this time. And Lovins lost to Soko. Lennon guiding it into the back of the net. Oh, there'll be a few champagne cocks popping in the east end of Glasgow. Keep. Oh, that's a wonderful save from Cammy Bell. Echoes off his Communities League Cup heroics. This play from Commons. This is Ledley. Mulgrew in support. Easing away from Fowler. Oh, he's cut on one in. And Charlie McGrew has his second of the match. Celtic are rampant. It's a beautiful finish on what is his weaker foot. And Charlie McGrew, one of the contenders for player of the year, surely. Key. It's a lovely spot. Here's Collins. Samaras is in support. Another great save from Cali Bell. Though well, he's despairing at his defence, certainly little they could score. Pretty much at will. Commons once more, Celtic flooding men forward. Still Commons. Samaras up against Nelson. The Kelly defender does enough. Here's Mulgrew though. There's Hooper at the back post. It's four. Completely unmarked, Gary Hooper just on side against the Sokol found wanting, and that allowed Gary Hooper to notch his 21st goal of the season. And here's something we haven't seen too often. Kamarnock on the attack is Gordon, has a useful ball, Forster gets to it, still the chance. Barber blocked, Liam Kelly. And Forster did well to deal with Ben Gordon's cross. And he relied on his defenders to clear the danger as well. 
Celtic looking to add further to the already pretty impressive lead. This is Adam Matthews up against Gary Harkins. He's away from him. He's away from Gordon. Adam Matthews has done really well. Bell pushes it away. And Sissoko completes the clearance. Terrific play by Adam Matthews. Just couldn't pick out Samaras. As Hooper has Collins outside him. Look at Lubins racing forward. The ball falls to him as Lubins on for a second. That was a terrific run forward from Lubins. But he couldn't quite match it with the finish. Plastered by Cami Bell. It's Twarzyk. Ledley. Stokes for Twarzyk for Ledley once more. Lovely chip over the goalkeeper. That is a fine goal from Celtic. Oh, they're enjoying themselves this afternoon. Lovely intricate move and a delightful finish to round it off from Joe Ledley. And it's a fifth goal for Celtic. Stokes, next there ahead of Sissoko. Defender recovers partially. There's Hooper, takes it all and finds the back of the net. A lovely strike from Gary Hooper, his second of the afternoon. It's six for Celtic. And they couldn't have written this script any better. No chance, Cami Bell. The final whistle goes. Celtic can truly celebrate now a first SPL title in four years. It's been a long wait, but they'll feel it's worth it now. The celebrations can begin in earnest. Worthy champions, despite all that's gone on. And a fine way to seal the title victory. No trophy presentation yesterday. That will happen at Celtic Park on Sunday the 13th of May when Celtic play their last home game of the season. Mind you, it seemed a bit like a home game at Rugby Park yesterday. And Neil Lennon bared his emotions when he spoke afterwards. Ultimately, you're judged on championships. Um, you know, tr cups aren't enough. And I came here in, in 2000 and um, we had a great time. You know, winning championships. I, I wouldn't say we took it for granted because when you look back on your career, you probably never really appreciated it until you lost it and then you realised what a great achievement it was. A lot of other people from outside will say, well, it's, it's only this, it's only that, it's only the other, but to win a championship in your, in your country is, is special. And I tell you how hard it is, it's, it's that hard we haven't done it for three years. So to win it today, it's, um, it's a great day for the club and it's a great day for the supporters. And it's a great day for the Lennon family as well. Yeah, great moment for, for Neil Lennon and those around him. Well done to him. Mm -hmm. And his success part all the greater when you think about what he's had to contend with, both in the background mm -hmm. and very much in the foreground. Um, very much so. I mean, it's, it's a hard enough job, you know, to do in any circumstances. But add what he's had to deal with off the park as well. It's incredible. I remember talking to Gordon Strachan about it and said that that job, you know, burst his head. And he was a seasoned manager. And this is Neil Lennon, just into his first job. He had been Celtic manager and all the other stuff on top of it as well. So he's been under a huge amount of pressure and he's coped with it, I think, generally very admirably indeed. At Rugby Park, just about the perfect day for Celtic. Uh, it was like a, a home game because Rugby Park was full of Celtic supporters. And if there was any doubt about Charlie McGrew for player of the season, maybe those doubts were removed right here. I tell you what, he's absolutely fabulous. That left foot is unbelievable. Uh, I mean, I don't know, there's, there's not many better, definitely in Scotland, but nobody may much better in England either. And his right foot's okay as well. I mean, fantastic. And he's basically destroyed Kilmarnock. And it's the perfect way to start the game. We started it incredibly well. And after that, he just played beautiful football. This is brilliant. That little flick. Ah, oh, and it's... When you're, when you're playing with confidence, you're well ahead, you want to win the league in the right way, in a memorable way. And, the, you know, it would have been unfair slightly if uh, Hooper wouldn't have scored as well and he got a couple of goals as well. And to be honest, everything went absolutely perfectly. And it could have went another way, you know, they could have won it when they weren't playing, somebody else lost. 
but they win it the perfect way and it's something that will live in their memories forever. Yeah, the scenes back at uh, Celtic Park were incredible as well. The players looking to capture the moment because when you win your first title winner's medal, it's a bit special. And for most of them is, as you say. Um, and for him, obviously. <laughs> well, he's won titles before, but his manager is special as well. Good for the Celtic fans there. Maybe a lot of the people didn't manage to get tickets to go down to Rugby Park as well. You can't really get a, a bus trip through Glasgow for the obvious reasons, so that's, this is the way it kind of has to be done. But they've celebrated, they've enjoyed it, and, and they've deserved it as well. Um, and to do, it's a phrase that's often used at Celtic, but to do it in the Celtic way, it's an attacking way, it's an entertaining way, it's a skillful way, and I think you can, with every bone of your body, you can say that's exactly the way they did it today. Let's look back on five key moments mm -hmm. in what has been uh, an amazing title mm -hmm. turnaround, starting, uh, of course, where else could you start but at Rugby Park? Well, it was astonishing because it hadn't been a great start to the season. Rangers had started well, 3-0 down at half-time, as we know, and uh, Neil Lennon wondering if he'll bother carrying on, but, you know, he'd got Stokes in from Hibernian, and he did a great job there, brought them back, and they started to believe, and you can feel a team just growing. And by the way, it's that boy McGrew again. Um, you can feel a team just growing at this point in time. They start believing in themselves. And I think this was an important game as well. And, th and this, of course, was the start of the 17-game yeah. SPL winning run. Yeah, and it's the belief that just kept on growing from there. And again, there are moments in any season. This, I think Neil Lennon thought this was the most important. You know, the fact that you're at, you're actually a goal down, you're at Mother, you take over Motherwell in this game. And again, the big thing for me is so many players used at important times, you know, and, and you forget the players that are, were used and maybe left out late in the season. And, the, and, and, the, and the night before, of course, Celtic had gone 15 points behind, right. so that was hugely significant, as was this special goal from Victor Wanyama, but also I think the value and, and the quality of Fraser Forster was displayed in this match well, as well. See, Wanyama coming through was fantastic because, you know, big players at big times were needed, but this is the last minute. And again, the belief just grows. And Foster had had tough times before that. And he, he from then on, had become better and better and better. Now, what's the best way to go on top of the league? Go two points clear is to beat your oldest rivals. And uh, beating Rangers, not only beating them at Celtic Park, but with a headed goal, which Rangers don't lose many of. That's what their strength was. And after that, they just motored away and they were never going to get caught. And it was a question, really, of not can I F, but when? Yeah, I mean, the inevitability uh, about the winning of the title. But just look at these pictures of, mm. of Neil Lennon from yesterday. Look at the release <laughs> of joy here. There is only one word I can think of there. Ecstasy. Um, it's absolutely ecstasy. Uh, uh, because it was so expected and you knew it was going to happen, you'd think he'd maybe be relaxed about it, but no. And that's why the Celtic fans adore Neil Lennon. I don't use that word lightly. They adore Neil Lennon because he has exactly the same passion as the most extraordinary Celtic fan that's been following Celtic all her life, and it shows you the much it meant to him there. Yeah, let's chart his, his record as manager, interim manager initially, having taken over from Tony Mowbray. Mixed emotions that season, the joy of winning all the league games till the close, but the agony of losing to Ross County in the semi-finals of the Scottish Cup. The following season confirmed as the permanent manager of Celtic. Two second prizes for him very close in the league, not close enough, won the Scottish Cup. And then, of course, into this season, the treble was on, losing to Kilmarnock in the, the League Cup final, winning the title with a lot to spare. And, of course, it could be a, a glorious double. And you do wonder whether Neil Lennon is now about to lead Celtic into a period of extended domination. Well, the, the thing that really surprised me was that runners up in this year's League Cup final because I thought before that, and we, you and I chatted about this, I thought Celtic actually could run and not lose a competition for years to come. Um, but it just shows you there are teams in Scottish football who on their day can raise themselves up. But whether anyone can catch them in the league with the difficulties that Rangers are going through just now, and even if Rangers, however they manage to do it, do get out of those difficulties, I think Neil Lennon's put together a fantastic squad, though. So they've got a great opportunity to do that. And as has been said, Neil Lennon, time and time again, this could be the start, the start of something special. And we, we've seen in a lot of the newspapers today the word legend and things like that rolled out regularly about Neil Lennon. Now, hold on a wee minute, he, he started in something that could propel him into becoming a real Celtic legend. It's a bit early to, to use well, that term I, I, legend, again, isn't we, it? we can use it because if you look at Celtic Football Club, they've had some incredible legends in the past, you know, and don't use it lightly. But uh, he's got every opportunity to do that. If he wants to stick at this job 
and build that squad because he will build it. He may lose a few during the, the summer that he wants to lose, but if he strengthens in one or two places, it's hard to see anyone getting even close to Celtic next year. What does he have to do to that squad to be competitive in the Champions League? Well, initially yeah. the Champions League qualifiers. Well, that's the big thing. It is the Champions League and in Europe just now because that's the, the big question mark that's still left for Celtic. You know that the, they could go on to dominate, and we all expect them to go on to dominate domestically. But uh, I think those players, are, are, they're growing. They're, some of them are quite young as well. I mean, we just see Mo Grewage getting better and better all the time. I mean, he looks like almost world-class just now if he keeps that going for another year or two. But I think they probably need another centre-back, probably a little bit more backup goalkeeper. But apart from that, they've got creative players all of the packs, just getting the best out of them all the time. And players like Combs, if you can get the very best out of them, then fantastic. I think you've got probably close to enough of a squad. Well done to Celtic. As we look at the Clydesdale Bank Premier League table, 18 points ahead, five games to go. They are uncatchable. They are champions. Rangers looking strong in second. The same could be said of Motherwell in third. Although St Johnson, Dundee United and Hearts could still catch them. In the bottom half, Aberdeen have gone above St Mirren again. And more significantly, Hibs are now seven points ahead of seemingly doomed Dunfermline. No SPL action Next weekend with Scottish Cup semi-finals taking centre stage, Aberdeen against Hibs is live on BBC Two this Saturday from 12 noon. And you'll see highlights of the Celtic Hearts semi-final on Sunday night at 10 on BBC Two. SPL highlights are available online anytime at the BBC website. That's it from Pat and from me as the Celtic title party continues. <laughs>